Ciao, I am Nick Stellino. I am looking through my recipe box for what to make for you. Oh, 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 I like this, I like this. I haven't made it in a while. This is simple, right to the point, traditional, full of flavor. That's what I'll do. I will make you chicken provolone and serve it with a light salad, with shallots, arugula, and spinach. Please, join me in the kitchen. I am at my favorite cheese shop, and I'm looking for the perfect piece of provolone. Sherry, how are you doing? Hey, Sherry hey. Levine. How are you? She is my great <laughs> cheese friend. She always puts me in the right direction. You have some provolone I'm looking for. I don't I see do. any. I do. I have some great provolone today. Oh, fantastic. A lot of people ask me, Nick, what is provolone? Provolone is part of uh, the Italian tradition of cheese that's made through uh, the process of paste filate, you know, pool uh, a paste. Uh, provolone is almost in a certain way, in the way of making it similar to uh, mozzarella. But unlike mozzarella, provolone can be aged. But often people say, Nick, what is pasta filata? Now, I could give you my explanation, but it's not as good as hers. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what is the process of pasta filato or, or the, the pulled paste, as it's known in English? So pasta filata is the process of pulling the curd and the whey at the same time to incorporate them, which results in a very moist, rich cheese. Now, the stagionatura, stagionatura in Italian means the seasoning, but not so much the seasoning, the aging of the provolone has a significant factor in the way the provolone tastes. Uh, what I have here before me, and I can see it just by touching it and also by the fact that I'm already smelling the aroma. This is provolone piccante. There are two types of provolone. Dolce, which is fairly young, I think about three months yeah. is the most that you can go. And both of them actually, when they're pulled in the paste, they're shaped like pears, right? Yes and they're hang from the ceilings and, and they're led to uh, age for a certain time. And you see them in Italian deli sometimes, especially out there on the East Coast. Now, the stagionato, the provolone piccante, is the one that I love the most. Now, I'm going to take a bite of this, but why don't you describe to us what you think is the flavor profile of this cheese? Well, the provolone piccante is aged for about a year, and as it ages, it loses a little bit of moisture and gains a very intense, sharp, nutty flavor. It truly has. Piquante, I would like to say. Yes. This is something that can actually stand very well when taken with wine. This is an ideal. By the way, I'm very proud of this cheese because it's a southern Italian cheese. Yes. It's our tradition. As Sicilians, we think that we make the best. Now, you talk to someone else, you get a different answer, but this is my show. <laughs> this is the answer you get. Uh, why do I like it? I like it because it has a flavor profile that whatever you add it to, it just pops it to the next level. Uh, you can bake with it, uh, you can make cheese sandwiches with it. Uh, I have a lot of ideas, as a matter of fact. Listen, why don't you wrap me a piece? I want to take it home with me, okay? You got it. And using my favorite potato peeler, here is the last shaving of provolone. Provolone is my favorite cheese, I love it. There's uh, a reason why I'm actually shaving it exactly like this, because later when I broil the whole dish together, this is going to make a wonderful cover for the chicken provolone. Why chicken provolone? Everybody makes chicken parmesan. I said it. Why not making a chicken recipe that features my favorite cheese? Provolone. Provolone. That's how we say it in Italy. I want to share with you another secret. Um, I am going to flavor this sauce, this basic tomato sauce, with a couple of extra ingredients, which are going to give it a nice, wonderful, elongated personality. But in order to do that, because of the fact that I'm going to be simmering for a while, if I was not to do what I'm about to do now, and that is the addition of a little bit of chicken stock, when the sauce reduces, it might reduce too much, almost to a paste-like consistency. So we put it into the blender, and the other reason why I do it is because you will see why. It, it just makes it so wonderful. Ah, look at that. Now, one of the things that you might have noticed is that the sauce changed color. It went from a deep red to an orange. There's nothing to be worried about. It's the oxygen that got pumped into the uh, mixture of uh, tomato sauce and chicken stock. And pretty soon, as we start cooking it, that color will go back to red once again. In this pan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And uh, then we're going to mix this with a couple of wonderful ingredients. First and foremost, my favorite, and you know that this is the truth, this is garlic. Garlic that we have cut fairly thick. We're going to add the garlic to it, just like this. 
a little bit of red pepper flakes. Now remember, these guys pack quite a bit of heat, so be careful on how you do it. My wife is not looking, so I have permission right now to actually crank it up a little bit. And then finely chopped onions. Why do we use finely chopped onions instead of the rough ones? One of the things that I wanted to do in this recipe really was to kind of give it the feeling of an elegant finish to it. You can already smell the aroma coming out of this. As you notice, I've added no salt and no pepper because the tomato sauce and the chicken stock already have a lot of flavor. When we're making this particular sauce, one of the things that you want to make sure is that you wait until the end before you put your seasoning. Because as the sauce reduces, using the sodium that already has into it, if it reduces, it reduces and reduces, you put on top of it additional salt, you might make it too salty. But uh, that's about it. A little thing that I like to do, and this is almost uh, paisana. Paisana, by the way, translated from Italian means country style. We add a little few pieces of basil because it's going to give its aroma. I'm going to reduce the heat a little bit. We're going to let this cook for just a moment or two. Now, once we get to the consistency that we want, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to add the tomato sauce. This is something that you're going to love. If you put a spoon underneath exactly like this, it will not splash back as you do that. You may ask yourself, how do I know that? You see the shirt that I'm wearing? I have a bet with my wife that I'll be able to actually finish this whole segment without wearing any tomato sauce on it. And I'm using every little trick that I know. We'll put this back up in here. I'm gonna put back up the top just in case something should happen. Let's move on to the chicken. The chicken that we are going to use, the portion of the chicken, is breast. First and foremost, we have to pound the breast. So here we have the breast between two little sheets of plastic. It's very important because as we go at it, we want to make sure that as the chicken breast expands, it does not slip out. They are slippery little suckers, these guys. Now, this is a tool that you already know. This is a tenderizer. Let me show you something about this tenderizer because it could be a weapon. You do not want to use this side. You see how the big and thick the spikes are. If we were to use this, you would completely shred the chicken. There's a smaller one on the side, also a version of a tenderizer that you do not want to use. This is for tough cuts of meats that you want to pound down. The chicken breast does not need that. So this is the surface that you want to use right here, nice and flat. Now watch the technique that I'm using because this is very important. Never be angry when you do this. You do not want to have things just like this that could actually spin you out of control. So you go like this. Once you pound it, off you go. There you go. Keep your fingers away, it's just the chicken. And notice how wide this particular piece of chicken is getting. And when you cook for a large number of people, have all the pieces already individually wrapped like this, it's going to make it very easy for you. Now, let me move this aside. We have a piece right here that we finished and it's the perfect, but now we have to bread it. Let me show you how to do that because this is a small technique, it's not all that difficult, but I wanna show you exactly how to do it. We have two large containers in here. One is filled with breadcrumbs. These breadcrumbs are basically the ones that you can make at home. Just use some old bread, add some cheese, some dry herbs, mix it together into the food processor or the blender and you'll get fantastic. Even store butter use uh, excellent. Two eggs into this bowl. We're gonna add a little bit of cream and a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Generous with the salt is because it's gonna give flavor to the chicken. Mix it real well just like this. Ah, uh, now, once you get to this point, this is what you want to do. You want to add this in here. The next thing that we're going to do, we're going to take the chicken and we're going to place the chicken in there. This is where a lot of people get concerned as to what's going to happen. So here we go with the chicken. Two tools that I'm going to use. One is this. You want to make sure that the chicken baits on both sides exactly like this. And now watch what we do. We take it from here, let it drip all the extra eggs, put it in here. And that's the technique that I like to do. Using the fork, I put the breadcrumbs right on top of it. As I do this, the next thing that you want to do is push down with the fork, kind of almost giving it a pattern to it. As you do this, you will notice that the chicken breast itself is actually expanding. You do this on the other side, you lift it, you bring it out. And you're doing this almost without using your hands, but it gives you greater control. There's still an enormous amount of moisture into the chicken breast itself. I'm gonna let this rest here for a moment, and I'm going to move the sauce on this side because it's simmering nicely, and that's exactly where you want to get it. And I'm going to increase the heat here on this pan to make sure that it gets for us at the temperature that we want. One piece of information that's very important. 
In this pan, we're going to fry the chicken. We did not use extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil would burn when used on very high temperature. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to use extra light olive oil. And that will give us the temperature that we like. It's my favorite one. It has a wonderful aroma and it has a very high smoking point, allowing us to have very high temperature without worrying about that. We're almost ready with this. We're gonna wait until it's nice and hot and we're just about there. Oh, yes we are. And here we go with the chicken now. As you can see, already it's starting to cook. We'll take about two minutes per side for the chicken to get the proper browning. Meanwhile, I'm gonna help myself here in assembling my flow, something that will help us a great deal. This is also called cotoletta alla milanese. Every time there is a breading of the sort, the word that we use is milanese from the city of Milan. You say, what difference does it make? Well, let me tell you, in spite of the fact that Italy is a single country, each one of the uh, states of Italy, Sicily, Lazio, uh, Venezia, they used to be independent countries of their own, and we all have our own language, and we all have our own customs when it comes to preparing those dishes. This is one of the dishes that really is closely connected to what happens up north. You see how beautiful it is already? You just want to cook it a little while until it picks up the color. Once it does pick up the color, that's when you want to take it out. Notice that there is no tomato sauce in this, nor will be any tomato sauce something later when we finish up the plating. Now, I have with me, waiting for me, a plate with a paper towel on top of it because I wanted to absorb the additional oil that might have left. And you also notice that I did not put too much oil because I did not want this to be too, too greasy. That's one of the things that I like. I like for everything to be nice, clean, and have a wonderful finish to it. Let me turn this off so we don't get it going too far. The next thing that we're going to do it, we need to use a pan that we can actually put into the broiler. So I want something with a metal handle, possibly something that is also non-stick that will prevent the chicken from sticking to the bottom of it. The last thing that I'm going to do for you, I'm going to show you how to assemble it. And then I'll take you all the way into the plating itself. This you're going to love. First, we don't need to worry about putting anything underneath because the only thing that we want to do at this point is to build up the flavoring that we'll have on top of this. The flavoring primarily is going to be given in two ways. First ways is a nice bit of moisture that is the tomato sauce. And what I do is I just put a slight film of it, just like this, lightly, on top of it. You don't want to be excessive because you're going to put this under the broiler. And if you put too much of this, it will be very, very goopy. That you want to avoid. Just think about something that you want to have flowing with elegance, fun, something that almost sings when you bring it to the table. And also, at the same time, it gives you this distinguished look of a refined Sicilian gentleman. I know, I made that up as I went along, but it suited me just fine. These are the pieces of provolone that we have shaved before ahead of time. This is what, once we put under the broiler, it will start to bubble, be nice and brown. It will give us the wonderful cheese crust that we love about this particular dish and that elegant, refined taste without making it too heavy, without making it unpleasant. So there it is. I'm gonna put this under the broiler that I have preheated and then I'm gonna show you exactly how to plate it. <laughs> and here we are. Isn't this absolutely beautiful? You, you see, what I love about this is the way the cheese has melted on top of it. This little bit of burn that you have over there, it brings out this flavor that the provolone has. It, it is wonderful because when you cut through the chicken, the, 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 the breading that we put on top of it, full of flavor, has all these layers of flavor. Then there is the cheese, there is the tomato sauce underneath, just a tiny little layers. It's almost like a, a birthday cake. Imagine that with so many different things to it. And it's tender. This is what I love about it. It's tender. It's very quick to make and it's very tender. Now, let's Let's assemble it, let's put it together. First thing I want to make sure is that the sauce has the mm, spicy just right. Oh, I love this. Okay, the way we build it, first and foremost, is to put the sauce at the bottom. What I love to do is make a nice dressing with the sauce, exactly like this. The pieces of garlic, the onion that we have. Look how smooth the sauce is. The process that I showed you before, when we process it together into the uh, Blender, they gave us the consistency that I absolutely adore. Oh, mamma mia, it's like the Italian flag. By the time I'm done, you'll understand exactly what I mean. These pieces of garlic that you see there, they are so tender. They are braised perfectly throughout the whole process. They're gonna bring out whew, a flavor that you won't believe. Now, I'm gonna use my spatula and my spoon to do it just right. And here we are. We assemble it just like this. And watch this, the little touch that I do, a little bit of arugula right on top of it, where I dressed it just with a little bit of salt 
pepper and extra virgin olive oil. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. And there it is. Chicken provolone. I wanted to discover something new about rucola, and I decided to get connected with one of the experts. Ray, how are you doing? Good nice morning. Nice to see you. Always a pleasure. I want to share with the viewers something unique about rucola. Why don't you tell me, what are these two different types of rucola that you're growing? This is a rucola roquette. Roquette. A uh, like a rocket. Like a rocket. Yeah. It's a, a baby variety. We eat it really well. This is a rugula selvatica, which is a wild variety. Selvatica. This I had done before. This is very spicy, very peppery. Very spicy, very peppery. This is too, but it's softer pepper. Now, you have a 10 by 4 bed in here. I see that you've got several others. How difficult is it to actually manage it? It's very easy. Very easy. Is you it? let that go to flower, I see. Yes, I let this go to flower. This just seeds itself across the garden and comes up wild. It's and wild. this one instead? This roquette? one I sow seed. One of the things I want to share with you is that if you have the opportunity, if you have the right site uh, and the exposure to the sun, you should start some of this gardening. This is very easy to grow. It tastes fantastic. And in no time at all, you can develop the passion that this man has. Thank you so much. Mm, I'm taking welcome. some of this home, you know. I want some of that. I want some of that. I am super excited to show you the salad. You know, salad, most times, it's just boring. But you know what? If you just do a couple of things right, if you put together a couple of simple techniques, you will be surprised how great a salad can be. Come on, I want to show you this. These are chopped shallots. What I've done, I chopped them very fine, and then I kind of put them in a little bit of uh, uh, vinegar, white vinegar, as you can see. You let them rest for at least 45 minutes. What this will do will smooth over the flavor of the shallots, and at the same time, it will impart to the vinegar the taste of the shallot. Here, what we've done now, we drain the shallots. Here, they're nice and drained. There will be wonderful pop of flavor inside the salad, and we're reusing the vinegar for making the dressing. I'll show you in a moment how to use that, but remember, this is a very important step for as simple as it is. The next thing I want to show you is actually how to cut and how to use the technique that I want to make in this particular case with the red pepper. This cut I'm about to show you has a French name. It's called Brunois. In Italian, we call it i pezzettini piccolini. We're not as descriptive, but I think we're funnier. Now, here we go. Cut it on one side, turn it over, cut it on the other side. Get rid of this, put it away. Now, you see what we have, I'll turn it for you. You have the inside that's white. How do we get rid of that? Watch this. I stand it up just exactly like this. I cut all the way through. Then using my knife, I go at it very carefully to take care of all the ribs. Now, never be in a rush with this, especially with a sharp knife like this, but you will be amazed on how we perfectly clean this out. And look at this. This, which is the leftover that I have in my hand, is completely gone. Now, we'll put this aside. I'm going to cut this in this piece, and I'm going to show you with this. Watch. Now, this is a very sharp knife. What you want to avoid is for this knife not to do its job. So what I do, I use the point and you see how slowly I go right through it. It gives me great control on this width and the thickness of the pieces that I want to make. Very carefully. Now, as you get better and better with this technique, you move faster and faster. But I want you to see what this is. I'll move this aside for a moment. Now, we have all the sticks ready to go. Pizzettini. Now, let's turn them into brunoa. I love to say the word. Guarda. Piano, piano, piano. Always keep your knuckles behind it. But you can see what I mean. You see how small these pieces are? And why is it so important that we cut them so small? To tell you the truth, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. But it looks so much more beautiful when we assemble the salad. Let's make the dressing now, because this is the part that I love the most. The dressing, what I like to do is to actually put some of the ingredients in it already. So we go with a little bit of the peppers. We've got a few more in here. To this, I add some of the yellow peppers, and as you can see, cut just as fine. And then I go with the ingredients. We add, first and foremost, a little bit of paprika. Together with the paprika, we do some onion powder. Together with the onion powder, we add some garlic powder. The next thing that I do, and this is very important because we want to have something that counterbalance the acidity of the vinegar, and that is to use sugar. Put the sugar in there. 
Now, here is the vinegar that I used before. We'll put a little bit of the vinegar in here. And it's white vinegar. Even white balsamic will do, but white vinegar, any kind, the one that you love would be fabulous. And here are the shallots that we held back. So I'm gonna put the shallots in there as well. And then I'll use some more to decorate it. Remember, the shallots are imbued with the vinegar. So when you bite into it, there's this wonderful completion of all these flavors that slowly start to assault your tongue. At first, it seems to be like a frontal attack. And then before you know, you find yourself dancing into this wonderful music of ingredients that's coming together into one of your favorite culinary concerts. Wow, that was a mouthful. And remember, I'm the first one who said that. <laughs> now, let's, let's snap into action and let's put this one together. Extra virgin olive oil. Always choose the best possible quality that you can. We add in a stream, and what you want to do is to mix all the ingredients together until you get the nice emulsified finish that you would want to have. And here you are. Guarda che bellezza, veramente, una di queste cose che a me piace, sto parlando in italiano, I'm starting to speak Italian, when I get excited, it always happens that way. Now, let's move this aside for a moment, because what I want to do right now is to actually assemble the salad. Let me show you what I have. Right here, we have two types of arugula. We have baby arugula and we have wild field arugula. So, I grab a little bit of this, I grab a little bit of this. We already have this washed, dried real nice. On top of this, in addition, what I want to also do is to put some baby spinach in there. So a few leaves of baby spinach. More often than not, people like to use instruments to assemble the salad. Something like, for example, this, this tongue, or I'm telling you, when it comes to putting together a salad, the most important thing is your hand. And that's exactly what it would use. So here we go. We have here the dressing, which, hmm. Oh, I love just the aroma of it. A little bit of this, just slightly. You want to just simply anoint it. It's almost a, a religious ceremony, in my opinion. A little bit of salt and pepper on top of the greens, just to get them going, and the pepper. I love it because it adds a little bit of flavor to it. And then using your hand, you mix everything together. And as you move everything together, what you want to do is to make sure that the salad is covered, but not completely bathed in it. And it could take a little bit more salad because we put enough on it in there. Oh, guarda che bellezza. Guarda che bellezza, ma così si fa, eh? Poi, poi prendiamo il piatto, we take a little plate, and we start assembling the salad right on top of it, just exactly like this. And at this point is what I want you to see, something that I co call layers. I'm of the opinion that when you start eating a salad, some of the things that you want to have is little layers of flavors that you pick up with every bite. So we do it first with a little bit of the red peppers, then we put a little bit more salad on top, some more of the shallots that we had marinated before. A little bit more salad on top again. There you are. And then finally, mamma mia che pezzo. Look at the piece. You know, by the time you end up watching the show, you will be able to speak Italian almost perfectly. Lastly, one more decoration with the dressing on the side, just to make it a little bit more elegant. Just a touch of Parmesan cheese. And believe it or not, we just made shallots arugula and spinach salad. And here it is. It is an absolute pleasure to have you spend so much time with us. And what a wonderful bit of cooking we did today. Chicken provolone and then salad with shallots, arugula and spinach. Oh, I hope that you will use these dishes to turn your home into your favorite restaurant. Until next time, ciao. When you want to know about tomatoes, you got to talk to the expert. And I got my expert right here. Ray, how are you? Such a pleasure to see you. Thank you again. Why don't you tell us about these tomatoes? These tomatoes are San Marzano's. They come from the Vesuvian Plain in Italy. Exactly. And they are, make a great paste tomato. Ah, stop for a second. I want to tell you this. Why is that these tomatoes make the best sauce tomatoes? Because they have very few seeds. That proves the point. You see, you don't get this told a whole lot. Tomatoes, different kind of tomatoes have different purposes for making sandwiches, for making soup, for making sauces. These tomatoes, the San Marzano tomatoes, are gold. As a matter of fact, they make the best sauces ever. Now, Ray, most people will get afraid, but is this something very difficult to grow in your garden? No, it's not. The only issue it really has is it takes a little long to mature and we crush the season here. 
Well, one of the things that you have to realize is that you've done all this by yourself, right? Yes. And look, as you can see behind us, this beautiful towers of tomatoes. I'm gonna grab a few of those. I'm gonna bring it back to my own kitchen. And Ray, one of the things that I'm very concerned about you is that you're a little bit too thin. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a beautiful sauce. I'm gonna put it over rigatoni. You come to my house for dinner tonight. Is that ah, a deal? Yeah, it's a deal. I'm taking two bushel of tomatoes. <laughs> it's a deal, right? It's a deal. Okay, we done it. 